Hello everyone, this is going to be my very quick introduction to uh, the both the T book and uh, T1 chapter in particular. Uh, I didn't kind of ask you to read this uh, um, because basically because of time, uh, but I, I do want, uh, there's some important concepts to get through. And I do recommend if you have been using the book and you find it useful, um, I, I really do recommend going through T1 and at least just skimming through and getting kind of the main processes through, but I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can right now. Um, basically, the idea is <clears throat> what we're going to be doing now, we're shifting toward the idea of uh, thinking about temperature, uh, but we're not actually going to be talking about temperature as much as we're going to be talking about what happens when you take lots of particles and put them together. So we, we, we've we everything we've done so far. So when you were in C, uh, when you were in N, uh, when we were in Q, we're always just imagining that Every single experiment is done on one single particle. So in C, you always call a baseball. You don't actually treat as a group of atoms. A baseball, you just treat as a as a, a particle that has a mass that's concentrated at a single point, which obviously isn't true. Um, same thing in N, you do the same thing. Uh, but in reality, uh, we're always dealing with actually like large groups of particles. So when I have a baseball, I actually have a ton of atoms put together. Um, and part of what we want to be able to do is start understanding uh, the actual what all those atoms are doing. And and, um, and temperature is the most obvious place to start. Uh, this is the general, uh, um, the general uh, idea behind this or the general um, subject that this is called is statistical mechanics. The basic idea is is taking all of uh, all the things uh, that we know about statistics and all the things we know about mechanics and combine them together to describe um, large numbers of um, uh, of objects. In particular, we're going to be interested in things uh, called irreversible processes. Um, uh, irrever that's not how you spell reverse. Uh, irreversible properties. Um, and there are lots of different ones, but the most uh, the, the 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 basic idea is that there are some things uh, that don't look uh, that that can only um, be done in uh, one direction. Uh, so you can imagine uh, an easy one is um, is spilling a glass of water. Okay, uh, spilling a glass of water is something uh, that um, uh, is is basically impossible to undo. Uh, you will never get uh, if you knock over a glass of water. Um, and it falls to the ground, you will never spontaneously see uh, that glass tip back up and all the water molecules come jumping back into uh, the, um, the actual glass. And that's the idea of irreversibility. And okay, you could say, well, that's just because of gravity. Gravity only goes in one direction. Fine. Um, let's say uh, having a glass of water, um, uh, uh, you know, a drop of water spread out over a long, a large surface. It's the same thing. Those are all uh, irreversible processes. The idea is um, they're irreversible processes are processes that uh, um, would, uh, Thomas More says, basically will look uh, weird um, if, if you would actually run them uh, backwards. So basically, if you, if you uh, took a video of the process happening and ran it backwards, it would look really strange. Um, and, and you would know that the video was going backwards. And so we're going to try to kind of um, study those, uh, those types of processes. Um, to do that, uh, um, uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to look, uh, we're going to have to create a couple ideas. The first is um, the idea of, of internal energy. Internal energy, which we always, which we always um, call U, is just all the things inside of an object uh, that um, uh, that that uh, that give it energy. And I, I always found this really confusing because um, the problem with internal energy is for basically any object, you can never actually write down how much internal energy anything has because it internal it, it includes. Um, uh, includes uh, you know the nuclear energy that it, that the thing contains, the chemical energy that the thing contains, the thermal energy the thing contains, and lots of other energies that could possibly exist in it. Um, and you can never write down all those things. Uh, the the important thing is we actually don't ever have to write them down because all we're ever actually interested in is a change in uh, in internal energy. And so because of that, we're never actually going to uh, to write this down. But it always is going to be a little annoying because it always um, it's always a little ambiguous. As to what the actual internal energy is, um, uh, the other thing that we're going to have to worry about is a new uh, a, a new idea of um, uh, of 
and, and the, the main one that we're going to talk about in this case is thermal energy. Thermal energy is just the energy based on uh, all the movement uh, of the, um, the atoms and the things that make up the, an actual object. And that's going to be the main one that we're kind of looking at. Um, we're also going to uh, this, uh, talk about something called heat. Um, and I know that you say, well, I know what heat is. But again, just like in all of physics, heat has a special definition. Um, uh, 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 in, in this case, heat is simply the flow, um, the flow of thermal energy. From one place to another. Um, and so, uh, the, basically the idea is that, um, it's basically energy flowing between two systems as a result of a temperature difference. Um, so result of T difference between two objects. Um, it turns out all other energy that we've been talking about in the past is called work. Uh, you've talked about work before, obviously, in your N unit and your C unit. Um, but it, in, uh, this is basically just any, uh, just to remind you, it's any force um, acting over a distance. And so it doesn't matter what it is. It could be gravity. It could be um, it could be pushing on something. It could be an electrostatic force. It could be any of this stuff. Anytime we have work acting over distance, uh, that is, um, uh, or sorry, force acting over distance, that is a uh, work. Um, it turns out that we, uh, using these kind of basic definitions, we can create what's called the first law of thermodynamics, which sounds like a crazy um, new law. Uh, but is actually just our conservation of energy. All it says is that if I have some object, the change of energy in that object is just the heat. Uh, so basically, the the heat that flows in or out of the um, the object, plus the work that is done uh, in or out of that object. Um, Thomas More also includes this thing that he calls uh, energy transfer. Uh, but for um, I'm I'm actually going to call all, all the things uh, that he calls energy transfer just work because that's actually tradi traditionally how that's done. Um, I don't know why Thomas More decides to to flaunt the conventions of uh, normal physics. We're just going to call all this stuff work. So actual like electrical um, like electrical power coming in is also going to be considered work. Um, this is the first law of th thermodynamics. All it's saying is that the total energy change that you have in an object is again the the heat or the thermal energy that flows into or out of it, and the work energy that flows into or out of it. Again, this is simply conservation of energy. Um, uh, it's just saying that um, if you put energy into a, a, an object, or a, no matter whether it's in a heat form or in a work form, uh, then that uh, that ch the change in energy has to be this, uh, equal to that uh, that energy. Um, and so that's kind of the, the, the one big thing that we get out of this chapter. The other big thing we get out of this chapter is actually what we're going to be trying to do. Um, and it's based on a really simple, uh, almost stupidly simple um, experiment, which is that um, the, the basic idea is this. If I have one object that's hot and I have a cold object here. Actually, let's do it differently. Let's call this B. Let's call this A. I'll just say that this one's hot and this one's cold. Um, this is the basic thing that we're going to try to describe. It's called the paradigmatic thermal process. But basically the idea is that if you know that if you put these two things together, you know this from years of experience, um, heat is going to flow from the hot one into the cold one. All right. And it's going to be heat energy is going to flow from the hot side to the cold side until they're both at the same temperature. Um, and the question is, why does that happen? Uh, why does this actually happen at a, um, at a microscopic level or, or a macroscopic level? The point is that we don't have any types of equations that say which direction heat should flow or that say anything about temperature. Um, and so this is the basic thing we're going to understand. And it turns out by trying to understand this really simple process, of basically putting you know a hot thing and a cold thing together and letting them come to equilibrium. By the way, equilibrium just means when things stop changing um, is, is the idea. Uh, but allowing them to get to equilibrium and uh, allow them to get to the same temperature, um, uh, what actually causes that? And in particular, why don't we ever see energy flow from the cold side 
into the hot side. Why does that not happen? There's nothing about our equations that we've talked about so far that forbid that or that, that don't permit that. And so we're going to spend the rest of our time um, basically trying to understand that process. And I know it sounds crazy, uh, but it actually is one of the most important things uh, that we can study in, uh, um, in all of uh, physics. Uh, and will lead to some of the most basic uh, laws in all of physics just by studying this one simple thing. Uh, so that's all I have for today. Um, I hope this was useful and uh, um, come, uh, be sure to watch the videos where we actually talk about how we uh, learn why this happens.